Hi, I'm Deborah Fields. I'm presenting alongside my co-author, Sarah Grimes, from the University of Toronto. I'm going to talk about websites where kids can share things that they make. So think about something that you made as a kid. Maybe it was a drawing that you put on a fridge at home or a project that you put on display at school. Children are still creating every day, but now these creations can be shared with even broader audiences online. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with a lot of what this can look like. Making a video game, creating an animation, writing a story, sharing something that you made, making art, filming a video. On DIY sites, kids can share what they make, get feedback from others, see what other people have made, learn from and teach others, ask questions, become leaders. There's so many things that they can do. But while we in this audience may be familiar with some really amazing DIY media sites where kids can share what they make, most media sites out there either don't allow children under the age of 13, don't allow sharing, or offer really impoverished designs. By the way, cutting and pasting your privacy policy document is not okay. So that's what our Kids DIY Media Partnership is all about, finding ways to support children's rights to create and share on inclusive sites where children are allowed with consideration of all of the legal and design challenges that come with those spaces. So over the last five years, we have conducted a comparative content analysis of 140 of these websites where children can share everything from fan fiction to computer programs, physical media, digital videos. We studied the laws and regulations that govern these websites across multiple countries. And we've conducted seven case studies of exceptional productive models, because there are those out there, of children's digitally connected DIY media production and their participation. So these are nonprofit sites, for profit, independent, university design models. We conducted focus group with children who use these sites and workshops with the adults who design them. So together, all of this information has resulted in an exciting recommendations document that we are releasing today. Um, a set of research-based, user-supported best practices for designing DIY media platforms aimed at and at least inclusive of children. So this here right now is our unofficial unveiling of our best practices of design document that took us five years. Um, so please tweet this out. <laughs> Get the word out. Um, we organized our recommendations around core design principles like you know, creation, sharing, civic engagement, uh, education, around legal concerns, because that's a big deal when you're working with children, um, child-friendly poli privacy policies, or even adult-friendly privacy policies, and copyright regulations, and um, also platforms that are child-friendly and age-appropriate. I'm not going to go over the whole design document here, obviously, so I'm going to give a few highlights about two of the things in our document uh, creation and related to that copyright. So DAY Media is about creativity. You have to be able to make something. So let's provide children with a broad range of design features and also complex, deep media opportunities. Let's also make use of the digital medium to give children chances to do things that they can't do in an analog environment. So let's make use of this unique opportunity. Also, being creative means drawing on existing material. So we should facilitate remixing and modding, right? Let's build transparency by allowing children better access to each other's creations so that they can build on each other's works. And since this means building on other people's work, it means building on other people will build on their work, okay? That means we need to have a discussion about copyright. So many children do not fully understand the concept of copyright. You could argue that many adults don't. They don't always see their creations as their own property, which also the website has choices in. And they don't understand the limits of others' ownership, which means that DIY sites need to educate children about copyright, including terms of service agreements. Uh, further, corporate interests must not override those of children. DIY media users must be permitted to make use of copyrighted material in their creations to the full extent permitted by fair dealing. So this means we need to determine what rights for each website, what rights children have over their creations, and communicate these rights clearly to them. 
We need to treat children as copyright owners and not just as potential copyright infringers. We need to ensure that terms of service documents are written in age-appropriate language and that there's a system in place to ensure that children are discussing these terms with a parent or guardian before they agree to them. So those are two of the highlights. There are like 48 of them. Um, I hope that you find this best practices of design document thought-provoking and helpful. Please download it. Please read it. Please share it. Thank you so much.